Hey guys, Island Homesteader here. Well, welcome to spring. Man, the weather's gotten beautiful here. This is uh, May 3rd. It's uh, about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's 68 degrees. Beautiful, beautiful sunny skies. Uh, just a light breeze blowing. <laughs> light for us anyways. 10 mile an hour breeze or so. Everything's greened up. Uh, the garden's growing. It's been a while since I did an update, so I figured I'd uh, take you down to the garden. I gotta take a bag of uh, kitchen scraps down to the compost bin or the compost pile, and uh, I'll take you along and uh, show you the garden while I'm down there. All right. Well, I usually start on the other side of the garden, looking towards this side, but I'll start over here this time because the wind's to my back, and uh, maybe it'll keep some of the wind out of the microphone so well let's get started this bed eight by four bed is uh lima beans and they've just looks like a few of them have just started to sprout you can see you can see the dirt there starting to push up and it's also got uh four squares planted of a red okra um, and it looks like only two squares have come up. Nope, there's another one starting to come up right there, right beside that piece of grass. So, uh, the red okra I bought up in Asheville, North Carolina. We were up there a few weekends ago for the Mother Earth News Fair and uh, went to a local seed store in town. Um, it's an heirloom called uh, Aunt Hetty's Red or something like that. So, anyway, uh, if you've never been to a Mother Earth News Fair and you have the opportunity, if one comes close to you, I encourage you to go. Me and my wife really, really enjoyed it. A lot of good talks. Um, just uh, talking to people in the different uh, venues and stuff. Uh, tons and tons of exhibitors. Just really neat. We really enjoyed it. Um, I'm glad we went and uh, I'm sure they're coming back there next year and we'll be going again next year because uh, we learned a lot. And it was just, like I said, it was just, a, it was a good weekend. The weather was beautiful. It was a chance to get out and walk around, a chance to see Asheville. Uh, we never really spent much time up there. It's uh, the opposite spectrum of the state from where we are. Um, so it was really fun. So anyway, I, I did get some seeds and stuff while I was up there, and that's where uh, this okra came from. So anyway, that's not, that's not doing a garden tour, but this box is a uh, pink eye pink eye purple hull peas and uh, pretty good germination there um, I got these seeds in Asheville they're actually uh, southern exposure seeds and I was really really happy with uh, the germination rate on these and then there's also right here on this end there'll be four um, just regular Clemson uh, spineless okras coming up there uh, let's see the box with the trellis netting horizontal is corn and germination has been okay uh, it's been I guess a week or so since I planted it and you can see there's there's a seed in every one of these grids but uh, we're looking at maybe right now anyway unless some more comes out we're looking at maybe I don't know maybe a 60 65 percent germination maybe a little better than that but not much but this corn's old this corn's probably three or four years old I uh, was still in the sealed package and I try to keep my seeds in good shape um, but it may just been old corn so I think I'm gonna have to I've got some more so I'm gonna have to replant some of these squares that didn't come up uh, if you've never seen me do this before I did it uh, two years ago I put this six by six inch trellis netting in horizontally down over these stakes and uh, let the corn come up through it I'll add a couple of more layers as it gets taller and that just helps in the high winds that we have down here through the summer our corn always blows over and this is just a support system to keep the corn from blowing over so you'll see more of that as the summer goes and then this box which is just absolute fantastic germination is uh, royal burgundy uh, green beans the uh, purple green beans these came from uh, Johnny's selected seeds this year so fresh seeds and of course they're beans so beans do well anyway but this was almost almost a hundred percent germination 
on these beans. I was really pleased with them and it was maybe four days after I planted them they were coming out of the ground. So I was really happy with these. So uh, so far so good. After last year's, we lost the entire box last year that I planted. The, uh, they all rotted away so hopefully we'll have uh, good beans this year. Potatoes growing in the 10 gallon uh, root pouch sacks. They've all sprouted. They're all looking pretty good. Uh, these are the two all reds. Um, those are the two Maris Pipers. These are the purple majesty, the all purple potato. And it's almost looks like it's time to throw some more soil in a couple of these bags. These are the Charlottes. And these are Yukon Gold, and it's it's definitely time to throw some more soil in, in there. Uh, Russell Sprouts, that uh, didn't do anything. I'm not ready to plant anything in there yet, so I'm just, they're blooming. Bumblebees are on them. I've seen honeybees on them a little bit, so I'm just letting them sit there until I'm ready to do something in that box. Um, this 4x4 four four box and that 4x4 four four box right there. Uh, and this 8x4 box are the only thing that I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet. Um, one of them, either, well, either two four-footers or the one eight-footer is going to be yellow squash. And whichever one is not, then the other ones are going to be the, uh, this Parthenocarpic Parthenon squash or zucchinis that I got. So that's what all that is. Uh, the collards that I cut off that didn't do anything, just the stumps re-sprouted. Rutabagas, um, they're just going to stay there for a little while longer. Um, this box is going to be some sugar baby watermelon. This box, that's nothing's planted in. Um, I've ordered some more of the root pouch bags, the five gallon ones, and this is where I'm going to put all my uh, peppers and eggplant. I'm going to grow them all in the five gallon bags in this box. Uh, this box that I grew the tomatoes in last year is going to be tomatoes again this year as you'll see here in a second. Um, I covered the box with uh, black weed fabric just like the potatoes are sitting on and uh, tucked it in around the sides and just put some sand on it just to hold it down. So you can see the, you can see the weed cloth there underneath the, the tomato bags. These five are Rutgers Determinant Tomatoes, same ones I grew last year, uh, just planted a couple days ago. And these are Big Beef Hybrids. I've heard Bobby, MHP Gardener, talk so much about these and how happy he is about these. And I've actually seen them in his greenhouse in person growing and they were, uh, they were doing amazing. So I saw them this year, so I grabbed five of them, and uh, they just went in the bags yesterday. And then we had a good rain yesterday evening, so that was perfect. Snow peas are coming along. Uh, a smaller size on one side and the bigger ones on the other side. Uh, but they're doing great. Really happy so far with the way they've come up. Uh, this trellis, the tall one, and that tall one are going to be my diva cucumbers. They're just not quite ready to come out here and go on the ground yet. These two shorter trellises here are both uh, Fortex pole beans. Again, I've heard Bobby talk so much about those that uh, I wanted to give them a try. I've, not, I've just not been happy with pole beans so far. We've tried uh, we've tried a couple of different kinds the last couple of years and they've just not done much for me. Uh, but I figured I'd give them one more try, and if not, then next year these trellises will grow something else. Um, but they, they've they done really good. I ordered them from Johnny's, and uh, they were up in, <coughs> oh, excuse me, they were up in three or four days from when I planted them. Alright, this box is uh, kind of a salad box. Uh, these cups here have butter crunch and not going to be long, it's going to be time to get in here and thin them. And these cups have romaine and there's one, two, three, four, five out of the eight that sprouted. So got to do a little reseeding there. Uh, some blank space to do some additional ones. 
This is a row of red sails, lettuce, and there's only a few. You can see them there that sprouted. Um, but again, that was old seed, so I'll stick some more of those in the ground. This is a row of black seeded Simpson, and it germinated pretty good. This is half a row of, it was just called uh, sweets, no, just a salad bowl blend or something, just a blend of lettuces. And then from that spoon to the other side is a sweet mescaline mix. And then there's two rows of spinach in here coming along nicely with a little bit of grass coming up. I gotta get there and pull that out. Uh, been doing a little bit better, Modoc, with keeping the weeds down so far. That's the only section of the garden yet I have to to weed out, but that uh, stirrup hoe is really making keeping the weeds in the path out and the weeds in between the rows. I'm planting everything in my boxes wide enough to get a get a stirrup hoe in between them, and you can see I just come through here every couple of days and just run it through, and they're doing great. Uh, these are the carrots that we planted last fall. They've sat here all winter long. We've started to pull a few of them, and they're absolutely delicious. I don't remember the kind. <laughs> there's a uh, scarlet nantes in here and then the red cord chantonay and then i think these surprisingly enough i think these shortest ones are organic versions of the same thing so uh first time ever really growing this many carrots uh and we've just we've just loved them uh, i thinned them a month or so ago uh planted them in the fall they've sat here all winter long didn't do much over the winter um and they're just doing great you know easy no no work to them really getting in and thinning them was the hardest work but, but that was fun i enjoyed it uh and we ate them as baby carrots my daughter 14 year old daughter actually took them to school several times in her lunch and uh, some of the kids were asking her why her carrots look so funny you know because they weren't the perfect uniform baby carrots like they were used to seeing and uh, she got a kick out of telling them because her carrots were real carrots and uh, then she she explained to them um, why their baby carrots weren't real carrots and uh, so she got a kick out of doing that and I got a kick out of her you know, me knowing that she's listened to some of the things I've told her and uh, that she's not afraid to tell other people some of the things that she's learned you know I told her where store-bought bags of baby carrots you know that they're they're probably the reject carrots and that they've cut them to look like that that they're not real baby carrots so uh, so she she enjoyed passing that on to her friends so uh, let's finish this up because I'm sure it's going long I can't read the time in the sun but a uh, box of onions and if you haven't watched a previous video I planted these last spring they died off in the summertime when it got hot and dry and uh, they just started re-sprouting in the fall and uh, set here all winter lost just a couple since they they sprouted back up and I think I've showed showed you this before but the one thing I don't understand is that most every one of them has split as you can see here I get my big head out of the way you can see the two bulbs that was just one onion but a lot of them have done that they've split and, and made two onions this one here's a pretty nice looking one so far that I think there's bigger than a golf ball right now uh, and this is a bed of beets I planted this is the one disappointing thing but I am seeing some more come up so maybe beets just took longer to sprout than I thought but this was uh, it's a 4x4 four four box of uh, cylindrica beets I bought the seeds from Johnny's again this spring so this is a long a long skinny beet instead of a round one um, so you get better uniform slices for like pickling and canning and stuff and that's what I, that's what I want to do with them I haven't made pickled beets in a couple of years so it's about time to make another batch so anyway quick look around the garden uh, a lot of changes uh, the garden is basically full the boxes that aren't planted I have plans for them um, so I really don't have anything else to do that I'm not planning on um, the only thing I haven't done yet is the tomatoes up on the deck I haven't got to those yet but uh, I'll give you a little a little peek at um, something new that's going to be going on up there hold on just a minute uh, if you see those two white pipes those are uh, two 10 foot 4 inch sewer pipes 
Maybe some of you will know what that's going to be. I'm not going to tell you just yet. I'll let and see if anybody guesses. I got a couple more parts to that that I'll show you uh, in just a minute. Then I got one other thing I'll show you outside. Uh, that's another project for this year. Going to be harvesting rainwater this year. That's a thousand gallon tank. It's going to go in the backyard and uh, catch the water off two different roofs. So that's another project that you'll be seeing uh, coming up here this year. A thousand gallons of things, probably six foot tall. I gotta get it around back, get it painted, and uh, get some piping going to it. All right, here's a couple more parts of uh, the system that I'm going to use to grow the tomatoes on the deck this year. Mini float valves. and net cups to go along with the four inch sewer pipe so I'll see if anybody can guess um, what that's going to be alright guys thanks for watching uh, I hope you've enjoyed this update and stay tuned for progress on some of these projects and progress on the garden alright thanks for watching again God bless